Nintendo, it doesn't seem that long ago when 4GB of memory was considered top of the line and only found in AMD and Nvidia's most expensive graphics cards. The GTX 680 and R9 280X are perfect examples of this, as they both had expensive 4GB versions. Well, that was a little over 10 years ago now, and nowadays you'll find cards with 8, 16, and even 24GB of VRAM found in uh, top of the line cards today. Hey, how's it going? My name is Emerson. Do you really need all that memory? Can you still get away with gaming on one of these budget GPUs like this RX 570 and GTX 970 that I have here? Introducing the GTX 970. This card was based on Maxwell 2.0 using a 28 nanometer process, contains 5.2 billion transist transistors, and costed $329 when launched in 2014. The main stick around it was that it had a controversial 4 gigabytes of memory that basically boiled down to essentially having two memory chips that shared the same lane, meaning half a gigabyte of memory was divided into a slower partition. Think of it as a two lane road forced to be merged into one lane because of some construction going on. Your commute is just going to be a little bit slower, and for those memory chips, it was. As when this card was released, people were finding out that this card had 3.5 gigabytes of pretty fast memory and only 500 megabytes of relatively slow memory. Um, and actually, this whole ordeal landed NVIDIA in this, I wouldn't say huge, but it, it landed them into a class action lawsuit. And if you purchased the 970 back in the day, you were entitled to about $30 due to this whole false advertising. The RX 570, on the other, on the other hand, is based on a GCN 4.0 architecture using a 14 nanometer process. It's got 5.7 billion transistor and costed only $169 one new in 2017. Nice. And because of this, for the longest time before the mining bubbles in like 2019, 2020, uh, this was considered the people's graphics card because it had un an unbeatable price to performance at the time. And on paper, this was this around the same performance as a 970 for almost half the price. So can both these graphics cards still hold up to today's standards, uh, only boasting four gigabytes of memory? Well, let's hop into some games and find out. Starting things off with Cyberpunk 2.0, at 1080p with medium-ish settings uh, and a dynamic resolution, both of these cards ran really well. I was thoroughly surprised. Now part of that has to do with uh, Cyberpunk's relatively recent update that just completely revamped the game, uh, you know, making a lot of lower-end systems able to run it much smoother. Uh, with the RX 570 we saw, actually with both the RX 570 and, and the GTX 970, they both managed to have an average of 46 FPS, which is really solid. Uh, the 970 actually had a lot better 1% and 0.1% lows, meaning it was just an overall smoother experience to play this game on the, on the 970. But overall, both of these cards at 1080p performed really solid, and uh, neither of them hit their 4GB VRAM limit, and really did not, that did not hamper performance at all. Now the next game I have here is Starfield. Uh, you know, basically being a glorified tech demo, this stresses systems like no other. At 720p with a dynamic resolution at the lowest okay. possible settings, uh, both of these cards were basically unplayable. Particularly the RX 570, which boasted an average of 19 FPS uh, and 1% and 0.1% lows with 4 and 1 respectively. This was basically unplayable. At the lowest possible settings, you know, we couldn't get more than 19 FPS, 19 frames per second, and honestly, I do not recommend playing this game on this graphics card, which makes sense. It's well below the recommended uh, minimum requirements. The GTX 970, on the other hand, had an average of 36, a lot more than the RX 570. Even though these, these two GPUs are, technically have the same performance, the 970 had almost double the FPS, and with some decent, well, they're still below average 1% and 0.1% lows with 16 to 9. But honestly, if you were on a very tight budget and you just had to play had to play Starfield for some reason, you could technically get away with playing it on a 970. I was thoroughly shocked here. All right, moving on to some multiplayer games. Call of Duty Warzone at 1080p medium settings was actually a very similar story to Starfield. Uh, the RX 570 showed an average of 45 FPS with uh, decent, meh, it was rough. And Call of Duty is a game you, really, you want to strive for 60 FPS. And honestly, at 1080p medium to lowish settings, it didn't hit any VRAM limitations. Uh, but the frame rate was just not there. It was not a smooth experience. There was dip frames everywhere. And honestly, it wasn't it wasn't pleasant. I was actually really surprised as the RX 570 is a GCN architecture. 
same style as the PS4 and PS4 Pro, which those can run Call of Duty pretty well. Uh, so I was actually kind of disappointed to see the R the 570 kind of lack uh, lack in performance here. Uh, the 970, on the other hand, other hand, really surprised me again with an average of 68 FPS. Uh, this was a really smooth experience at 1080p medium settings, and honestly, there really wasn't that much stutter. Uh, with the 1% and 0.1% lows. This was, once again, a really good experience for such an old card, which I'm generally shocked to see here. As, uh, you know, this is playable. It's actually more than playable. It's a good experience. You're only supposed to have two. Oh my god, you made me die. You're so blue. Now, for my last title, I have the newest game to be released here, Helldivers 2, at 1080p with dynamic resolution at the lowest settings. Uh, both of these cards got really good really good numbers. Uh, this game is extremely well optimized considering how new the title is and with both of them averaging around 60 FPS with solid 1% and 0.1% in lows, this was a, these cars can absolutely play this game uh, no problem. I was really shocked to see how, how well, especially given the GTX 970 how old it is. Uh, I expected the 570 to kind of do well considering this is a PlayStation title and uh, both the PlayStation and uh, the RX 570 shares some similar architecture, uh, so I can see how they can be they they can share some optimizations. Uh, but the GTX 970, I was really surprised to see uh, do very well here. And honestly, you know, if you're still rocking one of these, you can definitely, you know, I can definitely recommend you uh, purchasing Hell Divers too if you're looking to pick it up. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, honestly. Can you still get away with four gigabytes of memory in 2024? Honestly, it's a hit or miss. Obviously, I only tested four games here, but for the most part, yeah, you probably can. You know, a lot of the games here are very demanding, like Cyberpunk, and uh, Call of Duty is super demanding for some reason nowadays. It used to be such a well-optimized game, and I don't know why why it's like that, but for the most part, at 1080p, none of the games here used more than four gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, granted, I was using medium and low settings on a lot of these games, so, um, you know, once you start cranking up the settings, that's when it starts to eat up more VRAM, or require more VRAM at least. But for the most part, with the right expectations, yeah, you pretty much can get away with 4 gigabytes. I love to get my hands on like a GTX 980, as I think that's the most powerful uh, graphics card with 4 gigabytes of memory that still supports the latest drivers. Uh, but yeah, I gotta do a bit more research on that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully have a good one. Take care now. Bye.